You want a high-end PC? Well, today we're not doing that. We're giving you some entry level without a graphics card. What's up, guys and girls? My name is Juan, and it's my channel, Blueprint PC. So, uh, you probably already figured out from the thumbnail and the title of the video that I'm doing a build today, if you didn't already get it from this arrangement of stuff right here. Uh, what you probably didn't get, though, is this uh, conglomeration of parts doesn't make the most sense. And that's perfectly okay, because it wouldn't. Um, it's not something I would suggest as a build. However, it's what I'm going to build with. And not just because, oh, this is all I got, because I actually have other stuff. But um, this build is something I wanted to do a while ago. And I was going to progressively, over time, adjust it. And that's still going to be the case. Um, it's just now I'm going to make it more flexible right off the bat. So a lot of these pairings are not going to be what I would suggest as a 3400G build. In the description, I'll leave this list of components and at least a baseline for what I think a 3400G build should be versus this stuff. Just because there's more cost-effective and more performance-centric things you can do other than this right here. Some of the stuff, well, I mean, mind you, this will work and it'll function. And this is an upgradable setup, so you could do this build and then add a whole bunch of stuff to it later on and it would accommodate that nicely but there's a few areas where you're making you'd be better off making some better decisions from the start but i'm gonna run through this and then i'm gonna build all this stuff and yeah but so this will be a test bench um and yeah so it's gonna evolve over time so don't expect it to stay this way for too long but 3400g that is ryzen 3000 it's technically zen plus not zen 2 it's a four core a third processor with vega 11 graphics built in so we are going to do some benchmarks with that in this video i did an unboxing review of that previously along with this motherboard but i will include a few benchmarks we're gonna do some comparison videos later on so hit that like and subscribe button if you want to check that out but again ryzen 3400g the asrock pro 4 x570 motherboard uh, i did a review on this like i just said um overall still good bang for the buck AMD B550 is coming out here soon, and I you probably saw in my other Tech Lounge video that I, you know, there's some things I have against that, a little frustrations. But overall, still a good board, um, and this does give you some more backwards flexibility over B550. So for the cost side of it, I still think it's good being for the buck, depending on what your use case is. Sliding over this way, top of the little iceberg here. Four sticks of four gigabytes of Ballistic Sport 2666 memory. Uh, I got four sticks because I want the flexibility in order to add and subtract as needed. And I only got 2666 because not everybody in every use case can afford 32 or 3600. And even then, going forward, like I said, this is going to evolve into some testing. Not every option is going to be able to use the higher speeds, so I can just overclock this if need be in order to, you know, suit the needs that I, I have. So moving this out of the way, we have the Cooler Master Hyper 212. Uh, this one comes with the red LED fan, which I'm not a huge fan of. I will be pulling that off of there just because that aesthetically looks like poop. I mean, if it suits your build, cool beans, but this is not a Spider-Man build, so the red and the blue is not going to be a thing. So I will swap that out. But again, I got this cooler. This does come with the cooler, but I got this because, again, there's going to be some... I need a commonality between a lot of components, so this is going to give me one CPU cooler across the board. The power supply wise, I do have the EVGA 600 watt. Again, that's overkill for this build. You probably only need a 350 or 400. If you're just sticking with this, 400 and up if you're gonna add a GPU to a 3400G build later. Um, this is not modular, it's not even semi-modular. It's got ketchup mustard cables and yeah. So it's 80 plus, it's not bronze or anything like that, but it's gonna suit my case for this because this is not gonna be a daily driver. This is gonna be used for testing and things of that nature, so it will work sufficiently for what I need in this particular use case. So normally I would suggest at least a bronze, in all honesty. Um, so uh, I'm gonna to touch base on this here in a little bit when we get to the case side of it, but fan-wise we have the Raymax NVR120 FBR3. I hate that name, but we have these fans. Um, have not personally used them yet, so we'll see how well they work. But they're addressable. They do come with a controller in it. The two, they're in two three-packs. They're about 30 bucks, which I think is still actually pretty good for what they are. Um, 
And yeah, they do have a couple of neat tricks up their sleeve when it comes to like cable management and piggybacking off of each other and things like that. So kind of part of the selling point of why I bought these at least. Um, but yeah, so all this stuff is gonna get crammed into 3400, not 34. It's all gonna get crammed in here. I'm just gonna take it and just ram it in there. It's all gonna get crammed in the Focus G, not the 3400G. And a few of the things I had against this case in the first place are gonna be a pro for me now. Uh, it doesn't have a PSU shroud. Um, I'm gonna show in a video how to make one later and put it in here. But for the time being though, not having one allows me a lot of flexibility to access the cables and unplug and plug them in pretty quickly without needing to dissect the whole system. So that's gonna be good if I'm doing GPU testing and things like that. So kind of a pro there now, depending on your use case. Um, and just the, this being the plexiglass, the, you know, the plastic versus the MB311, where that was the, the glass, the temper glass, and that being a kind of a pain in the ass mounting solution, this I can take on and off all day long and it's gonna be safe, it's not gonna be problematic, where I even said in the MB311, it's great, I love that case, I prefer that case over this one, it's 10 bucks more, but the glass mounting solution on that was kind of poop. I wasn't, I'm not a big fan of that. So, but anyway, enough rambling on about what we got in front of us. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna put it together. We're gonna get to some benchmarks, going over this stuff. And yeah, see you guys in a couple. All right, guys, so I got her put together and I'm gonna probably overload you a little bit here with some information, so bear with me here before we get into the benchmarks. Uh, we will get the benchmarks um, and I'll give you some more info about that here in a little bit. So overall, went together pretty well. Uh, the case and whatnot didn't give me any hurdles or hiccups or anything like that. I did have some, however, which were uncase related. So the fans that I use here, again, are the Raid Max, the whatever the heck I call them, something, whatever, 120s. The fan hub that comes with these for RGB is fat. So this actually didn't fit along the back tray, uh, no matter where I try to work it in there. Um, there was a few spots I think I could have like crammed it and forced it and it would have been like getting squoze a little bit. Um, but I think that would have caused some other problems. Um, I actually end up putting it in the lower five and a quarter tray up here, which I'll put some photos on the screen here. And actually I think it worked out pretty well because it allowed me to actually, I zip tied it to the lower grate that was in there and it hit all the cables. So I didn't actually look at those. It actually helped keep cable management a little bit better off. Another thing to be aware of, uh, these fans do come with uh, the Molex connector and your normal fan pin. That's uh, just a three pin, so it's not PWM. 
Um, and it does come with a piggybackable set of RGB headers. So you can plug one fan into another fan, into another fan, and then into your RGB header. Uh, so I do like these. What I did was I actually cut the, the Molex connector off, and then I electrical tape that remainder just to the wires there. So that way it's nice, it's clean. There's no exposed wires anywhere to cause any future issues. So I've done that before. Uh, Deep Cool makes a set of fans that actually I really like, and they very similar. Um, they have some piggyback connectors on them, but those ones you don't have to cut off. So, but yeah, so there's that. Um, one really odd thing that happened was the motherboard is skinny. It's not a full ATX. It's about a half inch too narrow. So when I was actually going to install it, I was staring at all three of the far right standoffs on the motherboard tray not being touched at all by the motherboard. There's no holes there either. So it's not like I put it in there crooked or off or anything like that. It's actually just skinnier. It's narrower than a standard ATX motherboard, which kind of threw me. I did not know that. I did not realize that when I did my review on the damn thing, because I bet you there's people out there who bought this and went what the themselves, because that was, it, it surprised me. So, um, did it create any problems? No. Uh, the only thing I really would say that I think was a downside was when I was actually plugging in the 24 uh, pin connector, the motherboard, once I was trying to put it in there, you had to get a little force, it would actually flex the board itself overall a little bit, but it seems to be working fine, so I guess I didn't break anything. Um, Outside of that, the motherboard itself, I like all of your front panel connectors and things of that nature are all at the bottom, or at least the majority of them, or there's alternatives at the bottom, which is nice because then all my cables come out the bottom and then tuck in the back along the back wall, which really helped me on cable management for this one considering it's a ketchup and mustard power supply and there's a ton of fan headers and RGB headers and things like that that went involved with this one. So, uh, but yeah, this is going to be my new test bench. I'm going to do a lot of things with this in the coming future, uh, and it will evolve over time, as I previously stated before. Um, yeah, outside of that, if you have any questions, put in the comments below. We're going to jump into the benchmarks on this one. This is a small spectrum. We're going to do some more follow-up on this one for benchmarks, so please hit that like and subscribe button. Check these ones out. We'll come back, and we'll recap. All right, guys, so that was the benchmarks for you. Again, this is a small sample size, so it's not gonna give you the full spectrum. We're gonna dig deeper into this with a follow-up video, so keep your eyes on the horizon for that one. One thing I wanted to mention before I forget was that I did put a second fan on the Hyper 212 cooler outside of pulling the normal stock fan off of it. So if you didn't see that, I put the second fan on the back there, just a basic, like, blah, $5 case fan. So it's nothing special, not like a knock to around there that's doing some crazy business back there. But just want to let you guys know that. So you saw the temps and went, hey, that's a little bit better than I thought. That kind of might be part of it. Uh, but anyway, getting to the benchmarks themselves, as you saw from World War Z to Rainbow Six Siege to Tomb Raider, there was a spectrum there. Tomb Raider obviously brought it to its knees, and that's not even Shadow of the Tomb Raider, that's Rise of the Tomb Raider. That's not the newest one. So again, an AGPU is not designed to run AAA titles at high settings, or necessarily even medium settings. Maybe some older ones, but not the newer ones. Uh, I think for what it is as an entry level like combo unit for being the processor and the GPU, it performs pretty well. I mean, in all honesty, the fact that I was able to get playable rates out of World War Z and Rainbow Six Siege, I was happy with. And I actually did some testing in between that where I mixed the settings a little bit, some medium, some low, and even a couple things in high, and got a pretty good experience out of it. So, like I said, we're gonna dig more deeper into that one. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Is this something that you would consider, wouldn't consider, and why? And one little curve to that too is, 
let's say you went this for your main rig. Would you consider this for like a land rig, something to take with you, or like a travel PC or something along those lines? Or maybe just like, hey, you're building your dad or your grandparents a computer because they need one, but you want to game while you're over there, so you just kind of slip this puppy in there. But anyway, guys, again, try to keep this quick for quick and short for you, at least on the end here. Uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I will catch you guys in the next one.